Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for us and high, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. Wheaties, breakfast of champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Look, I'm just wondering if you ever thought what these three important words, breakfast of champions, really mean. Well, if you'll stick close to that loudspeaker for a few seconds, I think I can give you some very valuable dope about our breakfast of champions. Ready? Okay. In the first place, that combination of Wheaties, milk, and fruit is the year-round training breakfast of hundreds of great athletes, many of them champions in their own line of sport. Great baseball heroes like Bob Feller, Johnny Mize, and Frank McCormick. Football champions like Cecil Isbell, Don Hudson, and Parker Hall. Top flight golfers like Patty Berg and Byron Nelson. And I say I could go on from now until the cows come home just naming the great sports stars who go for their breakfast of champions almost every morning. But there's another mighty important reason why the name breakfast of champions fits this combination of Wheaties milk and fruit like nothing else. You see, this extra good breakfast is made up of three champion foods. Whole wheat, milk, and fruit. It gives you a lot of good bodybuilding nourishment. The kind of nourishment every athlete needs to help make him a real winner. In a breakfast of champions, you get every bit of the well-known essential nourishment of 100% choice whole wheat. And that includes a good supply of the vitamin we all have to eat regularly, that very important vitamin, B1. But remember one more thing about Wheaties Milk and Fruit. They're big-time champions for flavor. And say, if there's a single doubt in your mind about that Wheaties flavor, I suggest you have a heaping bowl full of those extra-satisfying whole wheat flakes the first thing tomorrow morning. You'll probably feel like saying, right along with the rest of us, Man, oh man, no wonder they call that dish a real breakfast of champions. And now, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Storm warnings have been hoisted in Manila, and the tossing white caps of the harbor shine through the night with a phosphorescent light. Jack, Billy, Betty, and Uncle Jim have returned to Manila from the headhunting country and are about to shove off in a schooner spin drift to find Professor Loring's wrecked ship. The spin drift is straining at her anchor in the harbor as wind and wave buffet her. But not far away, but hidden by the darkness of the night, the power schooner Black Shark rides at anchor with the unscrupulous adventurer Dr. Shapatra and his crew aboard determined to follow the spin drift to the uranium treasure in the Sulu Sea. And now, while Uncle Jim is ashore in Manila to arrange for clearance papers, Jack and Billy are in the main hold of the spin drift Checking supplies and the diving equipment which have just been loaded. Yes, sir. Well, Jack, that finishes the diving equipment. Everything is here to the last air hose. And Betty's checked all the food supplies, Billy. Move out of the light now. Look over this list that Uncle Jim gave us. Wait a minute, Jack. Betty is looking down the hatch. She wants to tell us something. Hi, Betty. What's the trouble? Jack, can you and Billy come up on deck for a moment? Well, I guess we can, Betty. But is it important? I want to make sure we've checked everything by the time Uncle Jim gets back. Well, it may be awfully important, Jack. I can't tell. Jiminy Cricket, something seems to have scared Betty, Jack. Let's go up and see what the trouble is. Okay, Billy, you climb up. I'll follow you. Oh, I hate you. Jump on Giraffe. This wind is something fierce. And just look at those waves. <laughs> it's too dark to see much of the waves, Billy. Now, what's the trouble, Betty? Jack, you may think I'm foolish, but I know I saw something. Well, saw something? Overboard. I saw something overboard. Well, what did you see overboard, Betty? Jack, it sounds perfectly ridiculous in this storm, but I thought I saw a man overboard. A man overboard? Betty, there's no man on this ship to fall overboard. And nobody is going to be swimming out in the harbor on a night like this. I know it, Billy. I know it sounds absolutely foolish, but I'm sure I saw somebody. Where did you see him, Betty? Where were you standing? Well, I had just come up from the main cabin, and I was looking astern, over there where the black shark is anchored, and suddenly I thought I saw somebody in the water. But what was he doing, Betty? Was he swimming around or just floating? Well, I couldn't tell, Jack. Just then another wave swept by, and that was the last I saw of him. And then I ran forward and called you and Billy. 
But, gee, Willikins, Betty, you must have been mistaken. Nobody is going to be swimming around in a storm like this. Well, I saw him, Billy. I'm sure I saw him. Let's take a look around, Billy. Yeah, I've got my flashlight. It doesn't give much light on those waves. Even if there were a man swimming around out there, Jack, I don't think Betty could have seen him. Why, just look how those waves break as they curl over. Well, maybe it was one of those breaking waves that looked like a man, Billy, but we might as well make sure. With the black shark anchored somewhere over there in the dark, and Chapato and Lazaro and their crew of cutthroats aboard, almost anything might happen. But suffering catfish, Jack, nobody from the black shark could swim over here. If they were trying to board us, they'd come in a small boat. And you can bet your life that more than one man had come, too. That's right, Billy, but just the same, we can't be too sure. We know that the black shark is going to try to follow us to the Sulu Sea. Well, we're sure enough now. There's nobody swimming around close to our ship. Yeah, I guess you're right, Billy. Betty, there's no one near the boat now. I'm afraid you were seeing things. Oh, I knew you'd think so, Jack. But just the same, I did see somebody. We'd better get back down in the hold and finish checking supplies, Billy. Uncle Jim will be back any moment now. Okay, Jack. But it won't matter if we don't get a check tonight. Not with this wind blowing. It looks as if there's a sure enough typhoon playing around somewhere in the Philippines. Typhoon signal number one was up before dark, Billy. That means there's a typhoon a long ways to the south of Manila. Well, I guess it means that we won't start for the Sulu Sea for a while. Well, I'll say we won't. The Sulu Sea is to the south of us, and that's where the typhoon is. We'll never start tonight. I don't know about that, Billy. This would be one swell night to give the black shark the slip. But, Jack, Uncle Jim wouldn't risk taking the spin drift into the middle of a typhoon. Well, it'll all depend on what course the typhoon was following, Billy. If it's blowing across the islands, it'll be way out in the China Sea by the time we got down there. We'd just get the fringes of it. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. I'd rather get the edge of a typhoon and get away from the black shark than have them follow us all the way down. So would I, Betty. If we could get a day's start, especially with a wind like this, we could lose them in spite of their diesel engine. They haven't got the chart that tells where the sunken reef is. They wouldn't have a chance of finding us. Gosh, I hadn't thought of that. But... Just the same, Jack. When I think of what a real typhoon can do, I sort of get cold feet. Why, they say that whenever a typhoon hits Manila, the steamers are piled up on Dewey Boulevard like broken-down taxis. All the more reason for being out on the high seas if the typhoon comes this way, Billy. That is, if you're in a boat that can take it. Oh, I trust the spindrift to take almost anything, Jack. Gosh, all hemlock, so would I, but we just the same. Wait a minute, Billy. What's that? Oh, it's the radio in the main cabin, Jack. I left it on to get the weather reports. Oh, it's coming over now. Come on, we'll see what the storm is doing. The wind's making too much noise to hear it up here, Billy. Let's duck below. Oh, okay, Jack. Hurry, Betty. We'll miss the report. Okay. Every Lawson has been reported to the I can swim that station in better than that. Move over, Billy. There you are, Jack. With extensive damage in Cebu. The center of the storm is now moving westward and will probably strike the island of Panay late tonight. Storm signals have been raised as far north as Manila... And all shipping is warned to stay inside with steam up until the future course of the storm center is determined. Stand by this station for further announcements. Did you get that, Billy? And now the we... Here and we'll see where the center of the typhoon is heading. Here's the chart, Jack. Here's Cebu on the chart. And here's Penai. Well, the storm is moving from east to west. And if it keeps that course, it'll cut right across the Sulu Sea. That's right, Billy. But it'll strike the Sulu Sea sometime tomorrow. Even if we shove off tonight, we'd be a long ways from the storm set. But there's no guaranteeing the storm will hold that course, Jack. It may suddenly veer northward. Then we'd be heading straight for it. That's a chance we'd be taking, Billy. But just think, if we could really give the black shark the slip, what a lot of grief it'd save us later. Oh, if only we could do that. Oh, Jack, what's that? There's someone on deck. Oh, it's Uncle Jim. Hi, Uncle Jim. We didn't hear you come aboard. Jack, come up on deck. You and Billy, too. Bring your flashlight with you. Jump on Something's happened, Jack. Come on, Billy. Let's see what's up. Oh, can I come up, too, Uncle Jim? You'd better stay below for the present, Betty. What's happened, Uncle Jim? Anyone been aboard with you three, Jack? Not a soul, Uncle Jim. Someone is aboard, Jack. Just before I pulled my skiff alongside, I distinctly saw someone on deck. Jump on crickets. Maybe Betty was right after all. What's that, Billy? Well, uh, just a few minutes ago, Betty said she saw someone swimming near the boat. But we flashed our light all around, Uncle Jim. We couldn't see anyone. We thought Betty was just seeing things. Well, I wasn't seeing things, Jack. I saw someone near the cockpit. But before I could get aboard and high waves, he disappeared. But who could it be? I mean, if Geppetto were up to anything, he wouldn't send just one man to the spindrift. I don't know who it is, Billy, but we're going to find out. Jack, you and Billy start at the stern and work forward. I'll start at the bow and work aft. Don't forget to look up at the rigging, too. Okay, Uncle Jim. Come on, Billy. We'll start at the very stern. If anybody's aboard, we'll find him. Oh, we'll find him if he hasn't jumped back overboard, Jack. Oh, it wouldn't be much use his coming aboard if he was going to jump back, Billy. 
Now, let's take a look around. There doesn't seem to be anyone here, Jack. No, I guess not. Wait a minute. Look at the hatch cover to the paint locker. It's a jar. Gosh, Jack, it certainly is. And we all, we snug down a hatch cover when we're through with it. He's in there, Billy. He's in the paint locker. He slipped in and tried to pull the hatch cover back over his head. Keep your light on it, Jack. I'll pull the cover off. All right, Billy. But look sharp when you do. We don't know what funny business is going on here. Okay. Here goes. There. There is somebody there, Billy. He's a Filipino. Gosh, all him lock. Why, it's Michelle. It's our friend Michelle. Michelle. Well, of all people. What are you doing here? Me sorry, Senor Jack. Me sorry you find me so soon. Well, climb out of there and tell us what it's all about, Michelle. Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim, we found him. I'm coming, Jack. Here, Michelle. Take my hand and pull yourself out. Say, you are wet. So it was you who Betty saw swimming around. That right, Senor Jack. When she looked, me swim back a little way. You got him, Jack. Don't let him get away. You won't try to get away, Uncle Jim. It's Michelle. How's that, Jack? Why, it is Michelle. What are you doing here, Michelle? Me go with you, Captain Fairfield. Me go with you and Senor Jack and Senor Billy and Senorita Betty. You want to go with us, Michelle? You know where we're going? Me no. You go to Sulu Sea. You go hunt for sunken ship. You go find treasure on ship. It is treasure, Michelle, but it's not the kind of treasure you're thinking about. It's scientific treasure. Then why Senor Shipato wants so bad, huh? He wants it so he can sell it for a fortune, Michelle. But if we find it, we're going to use it for science. There'll be no fortune in it for us or for you. Me no care. Me won't go long you. Let's go down in the cabin where the wind won't bother us, Uncle Jim. We can talk to Michelle better. All right, Jack. We'll all go down. Did you find it, Jack? Who is it? You'd be surprised, Betty. Here, Michelle. We go below here. Michelle! So it was you! Yes, it's me. Me won't go Sulu Sea. Now, Michelle, tell us how you knew where we were going. Me talk to sailor of Black Shark tonight. He tell me everything. He tell me they follow you to Sulu Sea. He tell me when you find treasure, then too bad for you. That why me come. Me want help you. But, Michelle, why did you stow away? Think maybe you no let me go. Me won't go very much. Well, you can certainly come along, Michelle. We can use another hand on the spin drift, especially in this weather. Then you're going, Uncle Jim? You're going to shove off tonight in the storm? That's just what we're going to do, Jack. I've been up to the weather bureau. They think we'll miss the center of the storm. And we'll never have a better time than tonight to give the black shark the slip. They can't see us when we shove off. But, Uncle Jim, suppose the storm changes its course. That's a chance we'll have to take, Billy. We've got to get away from the black shark. And if we hit the typhoon, well, we've got the stoutest little ship under us that ever sailed the seven seas. So, on to the Sulu Sea. How'd you like to take off from Manila Harbor in, a, in the teeth of a gale? And that's just the beginning of the big wind if the typhoon changes its course and heads north. But say, suppose the black shark also heads out to sea. You can bet that Chapato will do just that if he discovers the spindrift is leaving. Then the spindrift will be in double danger. You won't want to miss what's coming, so be sure to listen in at this same time tomorrow to another exciting episode of The Adventure of the Sunken Reef with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Listen. Here's a reminder that you ought to get your Wheaties Champ Stamp album right up to date as quickly as you can. So if your Wheaties Champ Stamp album isn't complete right up to date, ask Mother to get a couple of packages of Wheaties for you the very next time she shops. Remember, you can't buy Wheaties Champ Stamps anywhere. The only way you can get them is to buy Wheaties. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? This is Franklin McCormick saying goodbye until tomorrow for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, who have just presented another episode of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. The best breakfast food in the land. Wave the flag for Hudson Hawk.